Hey everybody, and welcome to another PSPP tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about t-tests. Specifically, we're gonna jump into a one sample t-test. So how do we do one sample t-tests in PSPP? Let's jump right into it. I have some data here that I've been using over the previous set of tutorials, and it has everything I need to talk about some of these basic, uh, these basic tests, so why not? Why, why not? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of my uh, cognitive reflection test questions, and I'm just gonna test it against some known value. So we're doing a t-test because we don't know the population standard deviation, because if we did, we could do a z-test. So now we have to actually get an estimate of the standard deviation for the population. We know the mean, we know the population mean, mu, and we're gonna compare mu to our sample mean, or x bar, if we wanna call it that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of these, and I'm gonna use a test value that we may or may not no, it's, this is gonna be made up, to be honest with you, but uh, let's jump right into it. So to do a one sample t-test, we're gonna go up to analyze, and we're gonna click on that, and we're gonna go to compare means. That's gonna bring up a sub-menu. Uh, I've never really used this means module before. I'm not entirely sure how it works, so we're gonna skip that and jump into these, these uh, three tests. Uh, for t-tests, and then we'll we'll do a one-way ANOVA in another video. So let's do one sample t-test. So one sample t-test will bring up a dialog box, and of course they're always so tiny. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use, again, my... Uh, why don't we do all three of these? Because you can put more than one in here. So we're gonna select all of these, and how you select all of these is up to you. What I did was I selected a CRT1 core, and then I held shift and clicked on CRT3 core. And then what we're gonna do is we can either, uh, does this not drag? No, this does not drag, okay. You can double, double click and it'll bring it over, or you can select them all and hit this arrow button, okay? But before we go, we can't just click OK on this one because we have not put in, we have not put in the correct test value. So let's go ahead and just say that the population mean on these questions, which is either right or wrong, uh, is 0.5. So that's our population mean. That's mu, right? But before we go, because now we have the pop, this is the bare minimum for how to use this. this test value is what your population mean is, what the value is that you're testing against. You can just go ahead and click OK and go with whatever the default is. But let's also check options down here with the dots. It'll bring up a different uh, little dialog box here with, with minimal, minimal uh, options to be honest like these options are missing a lot and they're missing a lot in SPSS too to get a, a really robust one stop shop you would have to use a newer program like JASP or SP uh, or um uh, Jamovi to be honest with you because these are fairly uh th these options are fairly um sad i'm going to go with so we can use uh, missing uh, missing uh, values. We can either ex uh, we can either exclude cases analysis by analysis. That's always important. Or you can exclude cases listwise. So if any one case has a missing value, it's not going to be included in any of the tests because we have technically three tests that we're doing three independent tests that we're doing right here because you can have a a list upon list upon list. And then we can change our confidence interval. So we we just wanted to check what those options are. So we're going to click continue, and it's going to give us whatever it is it's going to give us. We can click OK to have it do the computation. And then we're going to go to output here, and we're going to scroll all the way down because this, this output has everything that I've done in previous videos or future videos. So here we have, this is where it is, t-test. Test value is 0.5, and then we have our three variables. Missing is by analysis, and the criteria with the confidence interval is a 0.95, and so it'll give us this. So we have 
our basic descriptive statistics for each of these. Okay, so 102 people did these questions. Okay, there is a mean there. So 0.39, 0.2, 0. Uh, 0.34. So this is a proportion. Uh, zero is wrong and one is correct. So means are going to be how correct people are. And you can see people did not do very well on these cognitive reflection test questions. We have our standard deviations and then we have our standard errors for the mean. Okay, and then down here at the very bottom is our t-tests. So here we have uh, one row per test. Okay, one row per test, that's it. We get our t-value, okay? So these are all negative because these values, these mean values are less than our uh, mu, right? So we have a smaller number being subtracted by a bigger number, which is going to lead to a negative numerator, right? And so we get our degrees of freedom, which is just n minus one. So 102 minus one is 101 for all three tests. And then we get the SIG, which is a two-tailed, and you cannot change that. It's always going to be a two-tailed test. Uh, and SIG, it, this SIG value is your p-value. I've, I've run, when I taught SPSS in graduate school, uh, the SIG value has always been a poorly named column, but it is the p-value. And I'm glad that newer programs are changing it to reflect that's what it is. Let's not call it the significance level. Let's call it the p-value and trust it from there and using it correctly from there, right? So we have um, our p-values, 0 0.029, oof, uh, 0 0.00, which in SPSS and PSPP terms is less than 0 0.001. It's technically not zero. It's less than 0 0.001. It just will not uh, show that with three significant figures here, three decimal places. And then we have one of these that equals 0 0.001. Subtle difference there, subtle difference. So we have either equals 0 0.001 or is less than 0 0.001 if it is 0 0.000. Bit tricky, but there it is, right? And then we have our mean difference, which is the numerator. Uh, numerator, And then we have our co uh, confidence intervals here. And you can see that this 95% confidence interval does not include zero in either of these, uh, in either of these upper or lower bounds. So all of these tests are technically significant. And this is, um, regardless of what the p-value says, this is, uh, um, these are worth noting. And what we would say in that case is we would say that each of these questions are significantly less than the uh, chance value here at this point. It's like, yeah, you could either get it right or get it wrong. Obviously, that's made up. That's not the actual population value that we test against, but I did want to test it against that. I did know. I did know that uh, some people <laughs> that that people were not going to do well on this from um, past data explorations. So that's how you do a one sample t-test in PSPP. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. For more uh, these videos and like videos, thanks for watching. Bye.